As you all know, Secret of Mana recently had a remaster released. I love the original game, I still have my original cart. I was excited when I heard that a new remaster was going to be released. Although I still have the original game, I haven't played it since around 1995. As I mentioned, I haven't played this game in over 20 years, and in order to get a true feeling of the remake, I first had to go back and play the original SNES version. Due to it being easier to capture video, I played it on the SNES Classic and not the original cart. There shouldn't be any difference between the two, but I just want to mention that for transparency. Since this is an initial review, I also want to clarify, I played one hour into each version, and I did this for two reasons. One, I wanted to have enough time playing the game to get familiar with combat and gameplay. And two, I wanted to see if there were enough changes to the remake to see where I would wind up with a time limit. To the second point, I wound up in the exact same spot. Not to the exact minute, but close enough. Now with all that said, let's jump in. The main complaints that I keep hearing about with Secret of Mana are the modified soundtrack, the new art style, the new combat system, and the voiceover. There's not much I can say on the soundtrack. There are the same songs with updated music. I didn't mind this as it is the update that I would expect of a remaster of a 16-bit game. The game does give you the option to turn on the original soundtrack if you prefer though. The graphics for the introduction have been changed from the traditional 16-bit Final Fantasy style that was common at the time to a gorgeous update reminiscent of Japanese woodblock paintings. The art style of the actual game has been changed from the 16-bit sprites to polygons. I can see why some people aren't fans of the change, but I honestly don't mind them. The character designs are pretty much what I would expect out of a remastered 25-year-old game. The colors are vibrant and everything is more defined. It often feels as if you're interacting with a painting. I have seen some complaints that these graphics are similar to what a mobile game might offer, and I can agree to that. But I don't mind the design in this game as I feel it works. The remaster does offer an on-screen map that wasn't in the original. The obvious thing I can say about this is that it makes your navigation much easier. With that said, I also appreciate having to remember the various paths that you have taken during your journey. So although this is a nice addition for the player, it's something that I'm okay with having. But I wouldn't have thought, I wish there was a map at the top right corner, if they had never added it in the first place. Let me say that I like the new 360 directional movement. It feels more fluid than the original game, and it gives the players more freedom. This also allows enemies to have more approaches with their attack. I think this is a good thing as it adds more difficulty to the game. Or should. I'll touch on that in a second. The controls in this original game worked for 1993, but in 2018 I don't know how accepting people would be to keeping these controls. A great improvement that this game provides in regard to the camera and the battle is that your character is always in the center of the screen. In the original version, your character would run along the sides of the screen, often encountering an enemy before you have the opportunity to see it and or react. However, with the PS4 version, you have the advantage of seeing the enemy on screen before encountering it. I've seen some reviews comment on the stupidity of the AI. Let me say that I remember the AI being dumb as nails in the original game. In my trial, I had one issue of the AI companion getting herself trapped, causing me to have to go back towards them so that they can get themselves out. I never encountered this problem during my trial play with the remaster. They got rid of the action grids in the original game and put the characters on a 4 command setting instead. I didn't dig too much into the mechanics of this change, however the default setting on the remaster is a much smarter setting than that of the original. When playing the SNES version, the NPC refused to engage in battle. I had completely forgotten that there was this grid system in the first place and began getting frustrated as to why she wasn't engaging any enemies. I eventually remembered and adjusted the settings. With the remaster, there were no adjustments needed, she immediately engaged the enemy in the first battle we encountered together. So, let's talk about the voiceover. I generally enjoy voiceover in video games. No, the English voiceover isn't the best. The Japanese dialogue is much better and you can turn on the English subtitles. However, every character has a voiceover. Every... Single... One. 
You can simply read the text and move on to the next dialogue screen, but that defeats the purpose of the voiceover. And since some of the voiceover can be bad, it's not always the most pleasant experience. Another problem that I picked up on was that the English audio and the Japanese audio are not mixed at the same levels. When you play the game in English, the music is played at a lower volume. She was supposed to be assigned to Dialogue's troop. But I'm no fool. I faked a cold so they wouldn't send me with them. However, when you play the game on the Japanese audio, the music is louder than the voice. I have also seen some complaints about how the characters' lips don't move when they're talking. I completely understand this complaint, but I also think it's unfair. Gammon awaits you at the foot of the great tree. Go on, good hunter. Now, I'm not trying to say that if Bloodborne did it, then Secret of Mana can do it. What I'm trying to say is that you can have games with dialogue where the characters don't move their lips. Yes, I agree that moving lips adds more to the world. But more animation equals more money. Bloodborne is considered one of the best games of all times, launched at $60, and chose to skimp on the lip animation. For a $40 remaster, it makes sense that they're not going to update everything. I do want to add that there was one scene where the ventriloquist effect was a little off-putting, and this was the boy at the beginning. His mouth is wide open and only his teeth are showing. This is the very beginning of the game and might be why this has become such a large complaint. In other words, if the boy's mouth was shut during this scene, would the lack of movement in the lips be as noticeable as it currently is? Now as you can tell, I would not label everything as okay or fine. This version does have its flaws. In the original game, chest drops were rare. On my run from the waterfall to Pandora, I got two chests in battle. However, in the remaster on the exact same run, I received 8 chest drops. I do not know if the developers provided a better drop rate or if I just happened to get lucky. Either way, it felt more like the game was trying to hold my hand rather than let me wander on my own. I mentioned that I like the new combat system and that it adds new dimensions in battle. In theory, this game should be just as difficult as the original. However, I found that I was able to defeat enemies a lot easier than when I ran the same path in the SNES version. I honestly have no idea why this is. The HP and the attack are the same in both versions, yet the PS4 felt easier. Now overall, I do feel it's a decent remake of a childhood classic. It improves on some things, but it also hurts other things. The difficulty seems to be nerfed for the player when it's not needed, and the chest drops seem to be way too generous. In my opinion, most of the changes come down to personal preference. Some people will like this game, and some people will hate it. I can personally justify the $40 price tag to myself and be fine with the cost. However, I don't think I would feel the same if this were $60. And if this is your first time playing this game, I don't think you will be disappointed. However, if you have access to the original version, I would say play that one instead. Anyway, everybody, thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below if you've had a chance to play this game. What are your thoughts on it, and what did you like about the remake, and what did you hate about it? And as I continue to build this channel, if you want to see more content like this or like the gameplay videos I've done in the past, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.